All right, guys, we're headed out of our home inlet today, out of Pompano Beach, Hillsboro Inlet. I've got Captain Jose Ramon with me today. Guys. I've got Jose's Hello. son, Jose, and Adam right here. We're gonna go out for a deep drop today. Jose's gonna give us a rundown on how he keeps us vertical at the helm and helps out the guys that are dropping jigs. And I'm gonna give you guys some of my deep drop technique. And I also have a surprise in store for you, something that was published very recently. And look there at that. There you go. Oh. Ah. <laughs> we'll see you guys on the water. We're just a few guys that decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida. We want to fill you in on what we have learned along the way. There's not too many guys that go fishing with me that I'm willing to turn over the helm, but Captain Jose is a no-brainer for me. He's famous for big game tournament fishing and absolutely loves slow pitch shaking. He can almost set a drift with his eyes closed. Joining us today is Jose's son, Jose B, and an absolute wild man that I enjoy fishing with, Johnny Jigs team member, Adam. As we headed out the inlet, it was what we call on this side of the pond, Lake Atlantic. Super calm and ideal conditions for heading offshore. All right guys, we're over a little wreck. I'm gonna throw down the pink 190 flat back. This jig has been true to me. I've caught tons of fish on it. Let's see what happens. We're tight, baby. Guys, he went straight back down. Is that one of the fish? Yes. Oh, this is there's that. There we go, Johnny! As soon as I was gonna open my mouth. Good, good job. Oh. What the f That was a big fish with teeth. He pulled hard, bro. Very hard. Alright. You win some, you lose some. But that was a big fish, you guys. I can feel the power of that fish. My drag is pretty tight, but he definitely had some teeth. Or he possibly pulled me into a wreck. Jose says we're on some tunas. What are you putting down, Adam? I'm gonna drop the Johnny Jigs 400 gram all glow torpedo. Got that on the Saltiga 35LD and the Johnny Jigs Pro Jigger 3, which is rated for the 400 gram jig. Hopefully we're gonna catch ourselves a tuna. You guys want this guy to catch a fish. He goes nuts. Chicken of the sea, baby! <laughs> he goes nuts. Uh, you see tunas? Uh, I saw some tunas on the screen. I'm gonna go set up over them, brother. Go up there with them over there. Woo! Go ahead, go ahead. Woo! Yeah, baby! Here we go. What we got? Tuna Little fish. Little tuna, baby! Blackfin? They're here, so we gotta work. Now we gotta work. Now I know Blackfin tuna, baby. Little butterball on the 400 gram all glow torpedo. Eww. He's decent. Oh, you some butterball? Yeah, he's decent. Get that camera good over there. I'm here. Give me a few more cranks. There we go. Yeah, tuna. Tuna fish, baby. 
We chicken of the one. sea, baby. Chicken of the sea. There we go. Nice black fin. That's yes, on sir. the torpedo glider. Guava. Got him, baby. No football. No football. So Jose just caught a nice tuna. We're about to put him in the live well. But first, uh, oh, shake and bake. Man, before we put him in the live well, we like to bleed this fish out. So I just take my knife and come over here and take a look closer here. Right behind the gills there. And then you can actually just cut right across the gills and you can see the blood. It's a little gory, but that's, um, once you do that, the fish bleeds out. The meat's preserved and uh, it'll taste better later. That's it, I throw them in, put them in the live well, let them kick all that blood out and uh, we'll be able to have them for sushi tonight. But uh, look at this knife. I'm gonna talk to you guys about this a little bit later. It was given to me by a company called Sword. Jose, are you sure you know what you're doing? Uh, I'm trying to. Do you need me to do this for you? you sure, you want to? <laughs> you got no problem with that. <laughs> Jose is a super talented captain, so questioning his abilities is. I was hoping to get a rise out of him, didn't quite work out. We're at 945 feet deep, and currently. We have a current of about three miles an hour coming from the south and a wind coming from the west northwest. So it's coming from the wind from here, current is coming from here. Right now I got Johnny dropping uh, and what we're doing, we're going to try to keep his line completely vertical. When we're uh, slow pitch jigging, the key part is keeping yourself vertical. Out here in the Gulf Stream, we've got a, quite a bit more speed. So right now I got a ridge line here uh, that I'm following. Uh, we're about right now at about a quarter of a mile away, which I got to drop about that far away in order to drop once uh, once we get to that spot. Once that jig I wanted to make, you know, we want to come in here and the spot is here, and as the jig is dropping, we want to be on the spot because as we're deeper and with larger currents, we're gonna have a lot less uh, bottom time, like we call. Uh, on the specific spot we want because we'll be moving through it. All right, as you see, I'm working the controls, uh, keeping that line. All I'm doing is keeping that line is completely vertical. We're going to be moving at about three miles an hour, and we're interconnecting where we're going to be in our spot. Okay, come over here. Show the uh, showing you. There's no GPS, so show in there. Zoom in on, Zoom in on in here. As you see. Uh, we came in, I set my drift, and as we're going, we're going towards where I want to hit. I want to hit that rock, and Johnny's on his way down. Hopefully when he gets there, we'll intersect, and we'll have some hang time around that piece of structure. And that's what it's all about, guys. All right, guys, so Jose has me pretty much vertical. I'm reading 980 feet right now, even though we're in 940, and that'll tell you the scope that you have in your line. But first and foremost, I want to tell you guys, if you haven't yet, go and get the newest edition of Florida Sport Fishing Magazine. I am super grateful to them. They actually gave us the cover. And Chris Doyle, I just hit bottom. Chris Doyle. And we're right on the spot, guys. And myself um, wrote an article on deep drop jigging. And I'm just, it's, it's definitely a highlight of my fishing career to be on the cover of Florida Sport Fishing Magazine. So big thank you to them for uh, allowing us to be a part of it. So guys, look, I'm gonna tap bottom, right? I'm using a short rod. This is a Daiwa Saltiga uh, XX Heavy. So extra heavy, XX Heavy. And once I hit bottom, I have the rod across my forearm right here. And I'm gonna have a full range of movement as I'm jigging the bottom. What I wanna do is I wanna give it just a quarter or even a full turn once I hit bottom. Sometimes I do a couple turns just to make sure I'm moving the jig. And once I feel like I'm off the bottom a little bit, I release the bale and I go back down. And just like in the article, 
got to feel bottom, right? So if you can feel bottom, you've got a chance. So I'm releasing the bail right now. The line's going out and it tends to slow the more line that you have out because it's also having to pull the line down. So I'm letting it go, letting it go, slowing down substantially. There's bottom and it was very subtle, you guys. It's not, it's not gonna be a, a, a very solid thump. Even though this is probably one of the most sensitive rods on the market, it's not gonna be a huge thump. So I'm gonna use an over-exaggerated movement to make sure that I'm moving the jig. I come all the way up, let that rod unload. A couple turns, all the way up, let that rod unload. And that's basic deep drop technique. But I can tell you that this could be hard work for guys, especially if you're getting up there in age. So you can stick it in your hip like this. You are gonna limit your range of movement, unfortunately, with sticking your hip. But it makes it a little bit easier because you're able to use a lot more muscle in your body. So let's see if we can catch a fish, guys. So I can up, baby. Adam's okay. hooked up in the front. I feel like I've got a small black belly rose fish, but I did kind of come up fast on him. So maybe, maybe he's on there, maybe he's not at this point. But 70 feet to go, guys. Oh. Just came off. Really? Yeah. Adam just lost his fish on the bow. I've got 12 feet left. We see color down there. Yeah, just Definitely looks like a smaller black belly oh, rose fish. Right. No, he's not that small. He's decent. That was a big decent one. That's it. So this guy's is a black belly rose fish. And uh, what I'm using is a 600 gram guava Johnny Jigs torpedo. And I've got single 5-0 assist hooks on the top and the bottom um, that I tied myself. And I like to use the singles when I'm deep dropping. It streamlines the jig as well as it helps the jig um, get down faster. And then in addition to that, there are some, some really tiny fish down there that you hope to avoid when you're deep drop jigging. But I can tell you that deep, deep water species in general tend to be delicious. And this one in particular, um, even though it's not a big fish, it has the it's very delicious. It's a very delicious white meat. There's zero bloodline in this fish, so I enjoy coming out here and catching them. A lot of the guys, when we get into this area, they are looking for the um, golden tiles, which we're, there's a good chance of us catching a golden tile here, but I never turn my nose up to a black belly rose fish because of how good they are. So let's throw this guy in the cooler. Everybody's Let's out. go, baby! Woo! There's a nut. Can you see it? 40 feet. How many feet you got, Adam? I have about 1,200. 1,200 feet. I might just do manual. I don't know. That's a long way to go. Here we go. Got color. Uh, no surprise. Woo! Black belly rose fish. Look, it's a taco. Black belly rose fish. Alright, let's see what we got. Okay. What do we got? I see some color! What color is it? Okay. It's a color of all the rose fish. Oh. A big um. A big um all rose fish. Woo! Oh yeah! Big old rose fish, baby. Hold it up. Woohoo! Look at that Rosie. That's a big one. On a 600 gram watermelon torpedo. Available at johnnyjigs.com! <laughs>
that's all you need. A little bit of olive oil, ceviche, salt and pepper, or you could do with them ceviche like Jose says, and they are delicious. So these are going in the cooler. In the box. Yes, sir. What jig is that? The 600 watermelon torpedo. Yes, sir. Uh, Bingo! I thought for sure. I thought I got it. All right, guys. Excellent day on the water. We've got a few tunas. We've got probably a dozen black belly rose fish. Unfortunately, the scamp grouper had to go back down. And I'm going to cut into this fish, but before I do that, first, um, this company called Sword actually sent me a nice knife to try out. I'm going to check it out. They sent me a little letter here that says, Johnny, hope you love the knife. Uh, let us know what you think, Sword team. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to unbox this and uh, see what they sent me. Uh, <laughs> you hear Adam behind the camera whistling. So first thing I noticed, it's got a nice case on it. As a matter of fact, that's really nice. It looks like it actually could clip right to the fillet table, which is pretty sweet. And then the blade, man, this handle is pretty incredible. It's uh, Looks like it's like fiberglass, layered fiberglass maybe. I'm not even sure, but it's black and white. And uh, I always like to check the flex on a blade. So it's got some flex to it, so that's nice. And it, maybe it has like a powder coat on the top. But uh, I'm gonna cut into one of these tunas. Let's see how sharp it is. So first thing I like to do is I pull up thin just like that. And I'll come at an angle right across the head right there. Turn the knife this way. Let me get that camera straight. Turn the knife this way, and then I roll right up the spine of the fish. This is the tough part, so you can tell if it's a good knife that gets through there quickly. And it looks like it's doing its job well. Slide right down the spine, just like so. And then I turn my knife around, I come back up the other way, and I stay tight to the bones. And you, there's a lot of pin bones in a tuna fish. Get out that side, come right back up the other side, and that's how you pull the fillet off. And then the second part is just to skin it. So I usually like to leave just a little bit of meat on the tail right there so I've got somewhere to grip. And then I'll get my knife nice and flat, leaving just a little bit of meat so you don't get the skin. And I just roll it just like that. And that's it, guys. So that is a tuna fillet. And usually, with the tunas, they've got this bloodline right here, if you guys can see that in the sun. That's what you want to get out of there. That's not going to taste, that's not going to be too appetizing. So I give it a slice right down the middle just to remove that bloodline, like so. And I can tell you that the, the catfish down there in the water appreciate it. So you see that? That's not going to taste good. That's what you get rid of. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You could also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Putting a few TikTok videos out there and check out our store. Check out our store at johnnyjigs.com. I'll see you guys on the next one. Jig on.